um, Pastor Hilton for leading us off in this time of prayer. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thanks for the invitation. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sharing this your 40 days of prayer. It is my hope, it is my hope that as you journey through this period, your heart will be refreshed. It is my hope that as you journey through this period, your walk with Christ will deepen. It is my hope that as you journey through these 40 days, your lives will be transformed for the glory of God. Since Tuesday, I believe you would have been engaging in prayer and reflections on the theme mirroring the word ministry. And your sub-theme <coughs> for this week is the word. This, brothers and sisters, theme and sub-theme is a call to not only be hearers, but as you would know by now, is a call to also be doers of the word. As we reflect together, guided by the sub-theme, I invite us to reflect with me on a portion of scripture in Luke 9, 21, verses 21 to 26. It is a well-known text, but one we are called to hear again in this space at this time. This is what the text states. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, Son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. And he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, and yet lose or forfeit their very soul? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels, the word of the Lord. When we hear this morning the word imitate, we think of many things, such as to model, to follow, to copy. We think of words like knock off, carbon copy, mimic. We're told, my brothers and sisters, the believers, the early church in Acts, were first called Christians in Antioch. And they were first called Christians because there was something distinct about their behavior. They were behaving like Jesus in their demeanor, in their teaching, and in their lifestyle. Their mannerism led the community in Antioch to give them the nickname Christians. However, I am not sure if the label or the name Christian, which is suggesting an imitation, which is suggesting a copying of Jesus, which is suggesting a mimicking the behavior and lifestyle of Jesus. I'm not sure if the name Christian today carries the same weight for many of us. For we hear other names, other nicknames given to people like ourselves who associate ourselves with the faith. We hear words these days such as Christian. We hear words these days such as hypocrite. And you and I know that very often we are nicknamed and mocked them, the people, them, all wicked them. We hear these words being associated with persons of the faith. These are some of the names used to describe us and often to mock us, to ridicule those who follow Christ. And these words are, are used when people see or the community sees a disparity 
in what we say and how we live. It not, it's not always what you think about yourself this morning, brothers and sisters, but very often the, the Christian life is how others really experience us and how others perceive us. And that is very important because we can have the wrong perception of ourselves. But when the community, when the community ascribe to us certain behaviors or ascribe to our behaviors certain names, it says something about us. And so there is need for the believing community this morning to examine herself and healed to the call of Jesus, echoed in Luke chapter nine. If any would come after me, let them deny themselves, take up the cross and follow. If any would come after me, let them imitate, let them copy me, Jesus, the living word. As we listen to this text, what do we hear God saying to us this morning in this space? I believe God is not saying anything new, but I believe my brothers and sisters, it is a word and a challenge this morning from this text that we must continue to open ourselves and our lives to. And so this morning, I want to share with us some thoughts quickly emerging from this text to imitate the word. This is what the text I believe is suggesting to us, imitating the word is a call to surrender. Imitating the word is a call to surrender. It is a call to a life of daily surrendering of self and the will to God. You see, we live at a time, my brothers and sisters, when we have a growing appetite for consumption. We have an appetite to accumulate and to possess. The world in which we live makes it difficult for us to hear, to heal, and, and to model the behavior of Jesus. We live at a time where it's difficult to, 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 to listen to any voice that calls us to give up something. This age and this time tells us that more is better, more investments, more wealth, more education, more things, more material things as if we can never really be satisfied. And so we spend our lives yearning, searching, toiling for the things of this world. Yet the life of Jesus, the living word, runs counter to the ways and patterns of this age. His life was one not so much of accumulation, not so much of acquisition, but his life was one of surrendering of self. The life of Jesus demonstrated a reversal in the order, for he was willing, this Jesus was willing to lose in order to gain. This Jesus that we're called to follow was willing to surrender in order to save. This Jesus that we are called to imitate, to copy, to model, was willing to die so that others may live. And so, my brothers and sisters, Jesus' challenge to us and to his disciples is a call for us to copy, to model his behavior. If any would come after me, the word states, let him or her deny self and take up the cross. Jesus this morning is saying we can copy or model his example of cross bearing, his example of surrender. We cannot copy or model um, rather his cross bearing life unless we deny, unless we are prepared to give up self, to surrender self and the surrendering of self my brothers and sisters, is critical to this Christian life. The surrendering of material things is critical to this, um, to this Christian life. Can you imagine, my brothers and sisters, living this Christian life without surrendering of self? 
Can you imagine living this Christian life without surrendering that of our material possessions? Look again at the story of the, the rich fool. Look again at the story of the rich ruler who came to Jesus. Look again, my brothers and sisters, at the story of Zacchaeus that as he was converted, as he was saved, Zacchaeus was willing to give back, to surrender. The rich fool, on the other hand, was unwilling to give up anything. The rich ruler struggled with giving up. If any would come after me, they must imitate, they must model that self-giving nature, that willingness to give up whatever it is that God is calling us to give up in order to follow him. To be honest, friends, surrendering of self is the hardest thing at times to do. For it is only natural, and we are being honest this morning, it is only natural to look out for one's interest. It is only natural to think about self first and self desires first. It is hard, I know my brothers and sisters, it is hard for it, it, is, it is taking something from us, something that we value, something that we cherish. Denial of self, my brothers and sisters, is not a one day decision that we get up this morning and you know we say that I'm going to surrender it, surrender myself, I'm going to surrender that which I have to God. We know it is not a one day decision, but it is a daily decision. It is a minutely decision. It is a decision that is, calls us to be intentional, that calls us to be purposeful, that requires deliberate action on our part. It is a decision that we have to engage in daily. It is hard, I know, for the pressures are always around us and the pressures are great, especially in this consumer driven society. For everywhere we turn, we are told that we must hold on, we must hoard, we must have, we must keep. And so we know it's hard. I would never want you to think that surrendering of self this morning is easy. For the stories throughout scripture tells us that it, it was never easy. People struggled to be obedient to God. People struggled to imitate and to model the life of Jesus. Throughout scripture we see and we see the struggle even in Jesus himself as he too wrestled in the garden. Jesus, we are told, my brothers and sisters, withdrew to pray in the garden. Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. I want to believe he was saying in that moment, if there is another way, Lord, without having to surrender, if there is another way without having to die, I, I pray, Lord, that you will, you will, you will explore that option. I pray that you will go with that option. But in spite of the wrestling, in spite of the inner struggle, he went on to pray, nevertheless, Lord, it is not about my will, my way, but it is your will be done. What this says to us, my brothers and sisters, is that imitating the life of Jesus, surrendering of self, it is not easy, but it is possible. It is not easy this morning but it is possible. Difficult, yet possible. Surrendering is possible when we see ourselves as God sees us. Imitating the life of Jesus is possible when we see ourselves as valuable partners in the mission. It is possible, my friends, to, to imitate and, and to surrender self as Jesus did to the cause of Christ, when we understand the love of God in Jesus, a love that lifts us up, a love that embraces us, and a love, as the songwriter puts it, that runs after us. When we ground ourselves in that understanding, when we embrace that understanding, then surrender becomes much easier. Surrendering becomes possible because love, Love, love constrains, love enables us to, to give up sometimes the, the things that we consider the hardest thing to give up. And when we consider the love of God in Jesus 
Christ for us, when we consider what God in Jesus has done for us, it makes it easier to, to give up for him because giving up for him becomes our response for his goodness and his grace. Imitating the word is a call to surrendering of self, surrendering of self to the will of God. It is love that enables us to deny, to submit and to surrender. And so if we do not have this deep appreciation of God's love for us, it makes it difficult for us to give up anything. If we don't have a deep appreciation of God's love, it makes it difficult for us who call ourselves Christians to give up anything for God because then everything becomes difficult. But love, my brothers and sisters, that, that is unconditional love of Jesus for us enables us to surrender everything and anything for his cause. And so I challenge us this morning to be imitators of the word. If we are going to imitate the word that is Jesus Christ, we must be prepared to surrender self. We must be prepared to surrender self. But secondly, imitating the word is a call, I believe, I'm hearing in this text, a call to servanthood and to service. Imitating the word calls us to servanthood and service, to live a life of a servant in service to God. This was the attitude of Jesus, who though he was God, the scripture tells us, though he was God, he, he left the throne, he, he left his, his father's, and he humbled himself in the form of a servant. So when we hear the call to deny self, when we hear the call to take up the cross, when we hear the call to imitate, to model, to copy, it is a call to surrender self and it is a call to self-giving, a willingness to give of ourselves in service to Christ and others. Can I remind us, friends, Jesus is not calling us just to tag along with him. For we know that not everyone who walks with you and, and with him were for him. Look again at the story of Jesus. Not everyone who walked with him, not everyone who waved palm branches were truly followers of his. Those who walked with him had many motives. Some followed him for the next meal, some for healing, others out, out of curiosity. When we survey the pews in our churches, we see many who come for different reasons. There are those who come for they love the singing and the, not necessarily followers, but they come because they love the singing and the music. Some come for the preaching and East Queen Street, your loudmouth preacher. Others for healing and blessings, while others come because of what the church can do for them, while others come because of really because of what God in Jesus is doing for them out of a sense of devotion. Others really come. And so in the pew on, on any given day, it's a mixed multitude. The challenge, however, with many who follow and many who come is that they follow, we follow sometimes for what we can get. People go to church for what they can get, a blessing, a healing, a job, a partner, good grades or an exam. But few, few of us gather for what we can give to God. Few of us gather, friends, for what we can give. It was Jesus who said, I come not to be served, but to serve. I come not to be, be I come to be a servant. So like Jesus, we who have come do so not so much to collect. Like Jesus, we must understand if we are to imitate the word, we must, we must understand, friends, we come not so much to collect, not so much for what we can get, but we come because of what we can give and how God can use us to, to minister, how God can use us in his service. I invite us to see this command by Jesus as more than tagging along. More than liking a page or liking a church or worship service. Rather, this morning, it is a call, friends, to, to model, to imitate, to allow ourselves to be shaped 
by his qualities, to allow her, ourselves to be shaped by his character. And in being shaped by his character, it drives us and must drive us now to service, to servanthood, to self-giving, giving of ourselves. Isn't that what we love to quote John 3, verse 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that Jesus may die so that we can live the self-giving nature. Imitating the word is calling us to, to give of ourselves. Look closely at the nature of Jesus. Giving fully, surrendering selflessly. The Bible tells us he humbled himself in all situations. And we are reminded of how he gathered with his disciples again in the upper room. And in that moment, he considered himself a, a servant offering service. And he took the towel and he washed the feet of the, the disciples. My brothers and sisters, we see this in Jesus giving of himself again, even when he was on the cross and, and when he was mocked and jeered by the thief. Look at him, he, he saved others but, but can't save himself. They called upon him to save himself, but Jesus stayed on the cross in service to humanity, in service to the cause of Christ, selfless service. Is that which we are called upon this morning to model? Selfless service is that which we are called upon to imitate as believers, as people of the word. In so doing, the work of Christ in our world will drive us to care for the needy, to comfort the distressed, to stand up against injustice. We are called, my brothers and sisters, this morning not to be bystanders and spectators, not to be guests or visitors. We are called this morning to be servants. And so it's not about the name deacon, but, but don't call me deacon because that may be a pretty word. Break it down so that everybody can understand. Call me servant. Call me servant. Call me servant. And it, it's not so much about the titles, bishop, apostle, pastors, and, and deacons. It's not so much about these titles. It is about servanthood, a willingness to serve. Uh, you know, I, I realize that the church is moving in a particular direction where we worship um, leaders and we put them on pedestals more and more. That's where the church is going. A shift and I'm moving away from the principle and the model of, of servanthood to one where we're setting up kingdoms and lords, where we're setting up all these, all these hierarchies within. The, but in the kingdom of God, we're all servants of each other. The call to imitate the word is a command, my brothers and sisters, to serve Christ. Come from the sidelines, the back benches, the the places where we are standing, we are not spectators this morning, but this morning, if any would come after me, let them deny themselves, take up the cross, follow me as, as a servant. We are called this morning, my brothers and sisters, to care for the poor, the lonely, to comfort the broken, the lost, and those who have are in distress. Jesus is saying to us, imitate me. For in the life of Jesus, Jesus declared this, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for oh, the spirit one. has anointed me to do what? To bring healing. The spirit has anointed me to set free. The spirit has anointed me to bind up. The spirit has anointed me to declare favor, to serve, to serve. We need more workers this morning. We need not just members, but we need servants. We need not just more persons who declare that they're anointed, but we need more servants. We need not more preachers and teachers. We need more workers in the kingdom of God. People who are willing to give of themselves selflessly to others. So my brothers and sisters, it is a call to imitate the word in surrendering of self, is a call to imitate the word in servanthood and service. But finally, I say to us, is a call to imitate the word. And this is a call to solidarity, living a life to, that identifies with and uplifts the weak and the vulnerable. Imitating the word, my brothers and sisters, this morning is an invitation to demonstrate solidarity with others. A solidarity that calls us to stand with a brother, 
to walk with and to be willing to identify with others in their moments of greatest need. For listen to what the scripture says. It was while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were lost, Christ came searching for us. While we were outcast, Christ came amongst us, born in a manger, the greatest example of solidarity. This Jesus that we're called to imitate, to model, to follow, identified with all people, the women at the well struggling with relationship issue, the woman caught in adultery relationship, she was on the side taking a piece, but Jesus identified with the same woman taking the piece on the side. The tax collector, those individuals who we consider to be corrupt, those individuals who are scammers, tax collectors, those sick with all forms of diseases, the lepers, the infected, those infected persons, and today the HIV infected, the COVID um, patient, the monkeypox patient, those persons who we, we may want to scorn or not touch, lest we ourselves become infected. The blind, the bleeding, the beggar, all form and found a place rather and space in the presence of Jesus and persons with whom Jesus interacted with in a personal way. How can we forget, my brothers and sisters, the, 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 the noisiness of the children who were around him, yet Jesus took them in his arms and blessed them. Imitating Christ is a call to identify with those who are sinners, with those who are rejected, with those who are noisy and loud, with those who are left for dead, with those, my brothers and sisters, who are infected. Do not forget, we are called not just to be hearers of the word, but doers of the word as well. There is no space and place for denial. There is no space and place for us to disown or walk away simply because people are different. Imitating Christ, imitating the word, my brothers and sisters, is what we are called to do. Look again at the Samaritan, look again at the priest and the Levite. Jesus identified himself not with the religious, but with the one who showed mercy. And so coming to and being associated with church does not mean we are imitators of Christ. Associating with church does not mean, my brothers and sisters, we are modeling Christ. We can be good at keeping church rules and living up to expectations of the religious establishment, but fail to reflect Christ whom we are called to follow. This call to model, to copy Christ is a call to solidarity. Do not shrink back from reaching out, helping and standing with the most vulnerable, in this world, there are so many crises. People are in distress. Homes are broken. People are hurting. Let us with mercy and compassion this morning draw near. Draw near following the examples of Jesus. Draw near to such individuals. For being a Christian is not a title we're called just to, to carry. Being a Christian is not a badge that we're called to wear. Rather, it is about how we identify with, how we live out, how we model Christ in our community. I wonder if many of our friends and family and co-workers would say, boy, you know, he's a Christian or she's a Christian because they see how you live. There must be something distinct this morning about how you live. There must be something distinct this morning about your lifestyle. There must be something that, that links you, that when others see you, they, they see Christ in you. I suggest this morning, it must be the character. It must be the love. It must be the mercy. It must be the grace of Jesus. Follow me, Jesus says, a call to imitate, to copy, and to model his self-giving nature, his servant nature, and his life of solidarity. East Queen Street and friends gathered from across Jamaica and around the world. Mirror the word, imitate the word, and by so doing, the world will know you are Christian by your love. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen.